Welcome back to the Indigo Room and our series, Who Are the Indigo People? by Lori A. Johnson on Sunfell.com. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if this is your first time listening to the series, do yourself a favor and start back at the beginning of this playlist, the introduction, and then follow along until you catch up to part five. Also, subscribe to the playlist as there are more episodes that are going to be uploaded and you'll be notified when we do so. Are you an indigo? Do you think you're an indigo? Do you know someone who's an indigo? Okay, this is the channel for you. Let's get started with the reading. Part 5. Part 5. Some advice from an elder indigo. And there are notes, a notation. The italics are from a synopsis written by Pamela Osley from her Aura Colors website. And that is still available, uh, still being updated, auracolors.com. Quotes are used with permission. First quote. At this writing, most of the indigos are children, although... There are a few indigos who came as forerunners years ago. Unquote. I am one of them, an alpha generation indigo born in 1960, because I really had no peer group. My childhood was not very pleasant, but the incoming group of Delta and Omega generations needed some elders to show them that they can survive and thrive. And my own survival and success should give them encouragement. I am writing this to tell indigo youngsters and the indigos of all ages that it does get better to be patient and there are indigo adults around to help. Consider us the forward scouts who arrived early to report on the local conditions and cheer the youngsters on as well as guide and console them and counsel them. Quote from Pamela Osley. The words used to describe indigos include honest, aware, highly intuitive, psychic, independent, fearless, strong, willed, and sensitive. Indigos are old souls who know who they are and where they've come from. This is me talking, indigo Sydney Chase. Um, I knew I was different early on. I didn't know what the term was, but I knew when people try to talk me out of it, I knew I was not from here. I knew I was different. And many indigos feel that way. Just didn't have a term for it. Didn't know that, you know, other indigos existed. Now the veil has been so thinly, it's so thin and Many of you are aware that you're different and knew that coming in and you're on the Blu-ray and you're from the Blue Realm, right? So connect with me. There'll be a way to connect with me and other indigos in the links in the comments section. Let's finish reading. Being an old soul in a youth-oriented world is difficult, to put it lightly, Parents expect their kids to behave like kids, and when they do not, this frightens them. Precocious children can be real challenging to parents expecting a tabula rasa, a child who should be a blank slate, ready for the parents to etch their personal values and traditions upon. When an old soul, complete with accessible memories, experience, and morals and values built up over hundreds of thousands of years arrives, instead, many parents react like they've got a changeling in their midst. In some ways, they do, but an indigo youngster needs love and care just like normal children do, and a whole lot more patience and understanding. We are not being deliberately willful and difficult. It's just that we wish that our bodies matured faster. You'll hear a lot of, but when and why from indigo kids. Were you like that growing up? I know I was. 
And he was asking a hundred thousand questions. I used to always ask my father and get into trouble. Are we the chosen people? Are we Jewish? Are we Israelites? Because, you know, growing up as Jehovah's Witness, being raised as Jehovah's Witness, that's what you're told. <sighs> Many thumps in the back of my head. <laughs> Some parents, continue reading, some parents react by being in fearful awe of their child and letting him or her walk all over them. Don't. Others react by drugging them or applying them with uh, cultural drugs of TV and video games. Both approaches guarantee failure to thrive and even survive in this culture. The soul must be old, but it is still subject to the soul might be old, but is still subject to the animal impulses of the untamed young body. Gentle but firm discipline is required, and the understanding that the child is still a minor must be introduced and lovingly enforced. This was how I was raised. I remember from the tender age of about eight or nine, champing at the bit to be old enough to do my own thing, buy my own books, take myself places and be free of the restrictions of the parental household. But parents, while we are in your care and until the proper cognitive connections are made biologically and imprinted socially, you must set firm boundaries for us. We need them. We have the potentiality, the potential, we have the potentially lethal combination of ancient memories and unfinished impulsive young minds. You are the safety guard. The, the self-deletion impulse is high in teen indigos. And many of my own peer group was lost because of lack of understanding of our needs. I suffered from it too. Somehow I made it. Me too. Yes, this sounds scary, but consider it a prudent warning. We'll impulsively punch out if our impatient, immature minds cannot yet grasp the big picture. Again, you are the safety guard. Love us, listen to us, give us limits, and treat us like people. We will become, treat us like people we will become, not the impulsive brats we sometimes seem to be. And please answer our questions honestly. We'll ask thousands. Indigos of all ages are frustrated by the shallowness of society at large because they like to dig deeply into things that interest them. If TLC or the Discovery Channel runs in an in-depth series of documentaries on a subject the indigo is interested in, they are in hog heaven. But heaven forbid if the subject is superficially approached or highly referred to because indigos want to know everything. And right now, I say thank God and the Cold War for the internet. All indigos are aware that they are very different from the rest of the people in this world, depending on the influences around them. This can be positive or negative. Positively influenced indigos can grow their gifts more easily in an encouraging environment. Negatively encouraged indigos have more of a battle, which can result in heavy buildup of pent up rage. This rage has been adequately, has to be adequately discharged and grounded in order for the indigo to get in touch with his or her innate gifts. Loud noises and excessive visual stimuli can be very taxing on our sensitive bodies and we can react in negative ways, especially as youngsters. Today, things today are much louder and brighter and flashier than when I was a child. And just going out to do my normal shopping can be almost physically painful for me, even with my shields. To an unshielded indigo child, this racket can be agonizing and meltdowns can be the result. I want to scream right, away, right along with an overstimulated child sometimes. Much of this noise and flash is the result of several decades of close psychological observation by advertisers of kids and what stimulates them. They deliberately design consumer items that whip the poor kids into a gimme frenzy by bombarding them with colors and sounds and placing these things in the level of on the level of the targeted kid's eyes. These advertisers know all your kid's hot buttons 
and press them relentlessly. Do them a favor and keep the stereo turned down, the TV turned off, and the loud colors at a minimum. Take them to the park instead of to the bright and noisy store or theater or restaurant. Make sure that your indigo youngster has a quiet and pretty place to daydream undisturbed. They will thank you later. Many older indigos, including myself, have battled with depression, and this may plague some younger indigos as well. This depression is usually in the form of seasonal affective disorder rather than the chemical imbalance sort of depression. All indigo generations are very sensitive to light and need lots of full spectrum light in order to function at their highest level. Sunshine is good too, but take care to protect your skin with sunscreen. Simple wholesome food is best for indigo bodies. The simpler and closer to the original form the food is, the better it is for their growing bodies. Heavily processed, manufactured made foods like processed cheese and meats and convenience foods are not good for their well-being, nor are fast foods. Hot home cooking is good for the body and soul and cultivates pat patience and understanding of work and order. The proper preparation of food to include the infusion of the blessing vibrations is essential. If it is possible to cultivate vegetable gardens, no matter how small, do so, especially if your indigo is youngster. This will instill within them the understanding and reverence for food from seed to feed. Indigos like to make up their own rules and systems as they go along. They have an innate feel for the nature or natural order of things, but to many people, this order looks a heck of a lot like total chaos. Perhaps it is in some way, but to the indigo creating this system, it is holographic and makes perfect sense to them. Indigos aren't deliberately messy and cluttered, but they really dislike having to disassemble carefully created stacks of items or put away materials that they may need in the construction of their ideas and projects. Indigos of all ages are also great multitaskers. This may be mistaken for attention deficit because to the observer, it appears that the indigo begins many things and then bounces randomly from one thing to another, leaving them unfinished. But if you look at it from a holographic point of view, you will see that all of these little projects are related in sometimes extremely obscure ways and that all of them are thought objects and experiments in some line of inquiry and the indigo is that the indigo is exploring. When the thought or project is concluded and the inquiry answered to the indigo's satisfaction, all the components will be complete to the point where their usefulness and contribution to the whole ends. It is a whole new way of thinking. We tend to think in lightning bolts and bursts. When indigo kids are ready, they like me, will want to fly the coop at the first opportunity. I bailed at 19 and never looked back. I still love my family, but I must be independent. Do not let this, let this sadden you. Do not let this sadden you, parents. It is simply that waiting 18 years to do things we were born knowing had to be done can be chafing. Please be patient with our impatience and understanding when we make the inevitable errors. Make sure that you teach your kids basic life skills like cooking, housekeeping, care maintenance, car maintenance, budgeting, and financial management. That last is extremely important in this debt-ridden society. I cannot emphasize this enough. If your own financial habits are, are poor, then hire a professional to teach this to your kids. It is the best gift you can give them. This may surprise you, but many indigos may eschew or quit college and either go straight into the workforce or go to vocational school. Don't let this bother you. We have been there and done that enough to see that the emperor of education is stark naked. Many of us, this is why people were so upset with me when I allowed my younger son to quit school. 
I mean, they were just flabbergasted. This is Indigo, Indigo uh, Kim and Chase speaking. Flabbergasted. They could not understand why I let my 16-year-old quit school. Because I knew, I could see the school system was borked. It wasn't rigged. It was, it was a setup. Anyway, let me get back to me. Let me get back. I'll give you my commentary when I'm done. Um, most indigos... Okay, wait. I'm sorry. This may surprise you. Oh. The education is stark naked. Many of us, myself included, will become self-taught skillful researchers and library divers. When our mature gifts come online, there will be nothing unknown to us. We will have the ability to literally pull what we need to know out of the air. We follow our own threads of learning and often know more about certain subjects than so-called experts. And why, and why pay thousands of dollars to learn stuff that you can dig up in a library or on the web for free? Make sure your kid can read and write coherently. Though illiterates will not fare well in this century, don't whine at them about the opportunities we'll miss or the money we won't make. We know what the price of these opportunities, of those opportunities is, and have no desire to sell our souls to some faceless corporation just to have a comfier gilded cage. Many of us will be anti-consumers, turning our noses up to the magpie mentality of the consumer culture. Magpie love collecting lots of pretty shiny things. Mm -hmm. Most indigos will distinguish between their vocation, calling to mission, and their profession, their career. Many will find some sort of way to combine the two and will be very frustrated until they can su successfully do so. Yes, that is so true. When they do it, it will seem as if life is on rails. It runs so smoothly and work will be physically stuff, work will be physical stuff like raking leaves or hauling firewood they probably will deem to work for someone else but on their terms and will quickly vote with their feet if things turn sour for them. Retirement is a myth to them. They innately understand that they will always have some sort of profession, but they do disdain having to grub for money. Older indigos have an inherent distaste for big government and interfering systems and quietly long for true independence from systems like the economy, money, and salaried work. Oh my God. I forgot that part. But they also have the common sense and intelligence to make these systems work for them and understand that over street protesting, violence, and anarchy are not the way to go. Some will even hold their noses and involve themselves personally in, their, in these systems using their mission instincts to quietly change them for the better from within. Quotation. Some consider indigos to be bizarre. This, these assertive individuals are born with their spiritual memories intact. Many parents report that their indigo children regale them with vivid details of past lives or recent encounters with spiritual beings. Hi, this is Indigo, Tim and Chase speaking. I used to try to tell my parents, but they were so scared. <laughs> and, you know, they just uh, deem me as being possessed or demonized or, you know, not the wacko. I was the wacko of the family. Still am considered the wacko of the family. I don't care. I, I love that. I love that uh, term now. It doesn't bother me anymore, but I used to cry myself to sleep so many nights. So, 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 so many nights. All indigos have clear getting back to reading. All indigos have clear memories of past lives, although we don't think of them as past. Sometimes 
bringing confusion to us as youngsters. If our physical appearance or gender is different, we may remark upon it or even complain about it until our identity settles in at our seventh year. I was born blonde, blue-eyed, Nordic female, but always saw a stranger in the mirror as a child because my hair was supposed to be black and straight, my skin brown, and I was supposed to be a boy. That's not me. I don't look like that, I used to say to my mother's bewilderment. It took me a while to get used to my appearance, gender, and its limitations. I am comfortable with myself now. Even so, some indigos cling so tightly to their old identity that they may suffer from gender dissonance and may even get their gender changed. Indigo kids may make odd remarks about their toys and how real toys aren't plastic but are wood, metal, glass, or even stone. We tend to prefer toys that stimulate thinking and creativity over toys that play themselves, and we love puzzles of all sorts. Indigos are generally not phobic sorts, even as youngsters. They can be frightened, but generally do not believe in monsters, ghosts, or devils even if the household belief system encourages these beliefs. Insects and snakes generally do not frighten them. Mm. This indigo. Yes, it, yes. This, this indigo right here. <laughs> yeah, she's still frightened of certain insects. <laughs> yeah, okay. All indigos develop a nose for synchronicities and serendipity and permit ourselves to be used by our higher selves as tools of chance to join a conversation here, a news group there, read a book elsewhere, run into an article later. We are constantly stringing metaphysical beads in our minds and marveling at the glorious chain of events we are creating with them. We grow to love cooperating with the cosmic in this manner and when we are permitted when we've been permitted to act as a tool for spirit we are thrilled and humbly gratefully to be of service yes that is true look for some great metaphysical books and archaeological discoveries in the next decade or three those of us who are obsessed about our past lives enough to put up with academia will go digging in places that experts will laugh at. Those same experts will cry when the cocky undergraduate actually finds something and gets the credit for it. Many rediscoveries will be made and the greater world will learn that mankind has been around for hundreds of thousands of years longer than current theory states. Look for some major rewrites about how long this planet has hosted humanity and what catastrophes it has suffered. The Earth is a laboratory with, cosmic, with a cosmic reset button determined by the planet itself. And look for our youngsters finding micro evidence that human civilization has existed far longer than we ever knew. Our scientific techniques and sieves are becoming finer and finer they will be instrumental in validating these discoveries. Quotation. Parents also report that these children can read their minds and seem to have amazing psychic abilities. Many indigo youngsters may go through a rough adolescence with some paranormal manifestations and extreme mood swings. They may cause poltergeist activity, bend silverware, or interfere with electronics and overload lights. This is not a permanent problem, and when the hormones settle down, it will, so will the outside activity. Indigo kids can at times exhibit extreme sensitivity to outside influences, getting ill or crying at the drop of a hat. When they learn how to shield themselves properly, these problems will cease. That was me growing up. Boy, I was called a cryberry. Crybaby, not a cryberry. Well, maybe I was called a cryberry. I don't know. <laughs> this is Indigo, Sydney Chase speaking. I cried at the drop of a... You could look at me. Just look at me wrong. And I would start crying. Yeah. Just, just give me a look. <laughs> you crying, looking at me. 
<laughs> now, you know, my sensitivities, I look at them as my superpower. Yes. I love the fact that I'm very sensitive. Um, I don't cry at the drop of a hat anymore, but I, I do. I learned how to harness those powers, harness that, that sensitive power and use it for good. As a general rule, rule, as a general rule, getting back to the reading, indigos grow to become pretty stable emotionally. We are not liable to cry at artificial stimuli like movies and such, or get romantically fluffy or involves us, involve ourselves too deeply in others' problems. We may be accused of being detached or uncaring, but this isn't true at all. The indigo simply understands where his or her own life ends and another begins. Indigos innately understand that people are responsible for their own lives and actions. We do not suffer fools or deliberately manipulate or deliberately manipulative people gladly. And we can be pretty blunt with our disdain for such people. What is really interesting is that these abilities will strengthen and new ones reveal themselves as the indigo ages. Many indigo psychic abilities are locked away until the individual reaches a certain age, usually around 28 or 29. This is a built-in safety feature because the mental maturity to handle these gifts isn't really complete until the late 20s or early 30s. All indigos, let me say this really again, all indigos, all, not some, all, this is true, will have a dark night awakening experience around this time. This coincides with their Saturn's return. You can look that up and um, Google it. What does that mean? Where their true mission manifests itself and they have had enough time and experience as adults to try, test, fine tune, and learn to trust their innate psychic and intuitive abilities. Younger indigos may be aware of their mission from childhood, but until this period of they, their life, they may have difficulty staying on course because of their innate curiosity and love of experiment um, and exploration. The return of the intermission can be rough. I'm sorry. The return to the to the intermission can be rough. The apparent lateness of this bloom or awakening is due to the longer lifespan of surviving indigos, but this period is experienced by all people, indigo or not. Even the early alpha and beta generations will live considerably longer than their peers and will exhibit a youthful appearance well into middle age. The 30s are a decade of rediscovery and recovery for the extremely high-end psychic abilities like instant access to the Akashic records, Akashic realms, real-time, remote viewing, clear channeling and interaction with inner guidance, instant assessment of people's thoughts and intent, deliberate synchronicity, sheer dumb luck, simultaneous time hopping, paralleling, and other intriguing gifts. The healing gifts uncover themselves in the third decade or so. These youngsters will grow up to become formidable healers should they choose to fine tune this particular gift. Many, most of the 30s will be spent discovering and fine tuning these spiritual gifts. The fun really begins in the early 40s and the high power aspects of the mature indigo begin to emerge. So if your kid seems to be brilliant but scattered slacker or turns his or her nose up at traditional education and career opportunities, take heart. The mature inner core soul knows how to bide its time and will do so, although it might be frustrating for you at times. Remember, it is their life and they chose to return. They chose to return as in 
the chosen one. You were their guardian and teacher. Quotes. An unusual characteristic of indigos is that they frequently appear androgynous. It is often difficult to tell if indigos are male or female, homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, or asexual. Their sexuality is not their primary concern, however. It is their spirituality. Unquote. Many indigos may choose not to marry or have children. This is the trend for the elders and will run in the younger ones, too. We can care less about sex. Well, some of us. <laughs> some older indigos, myself included, have often wished that we could have come in as a neuter neutral gender so we could do our work free of the sex harassment, to our eyes anyway, of the breeding populace. The androgynous appearance of the main working group of youngsters was the response to our request to make this easier on them. And it didn't make it easier on them. And actually, I'm finding made it harder on them. We are not interested in reproducing. That is not our purpose here. We are here to facilitate the great planetary changes that are on the horizon. We also have an innate knowledge of how the wheel of karma works and know, as the ancient sages did, that reproducing will only guarantee that we will have to reincarnate again. reincarnate again. Many of us volunteered to return for the task at hand and have no plans to go native. If you harass us about this, you'll be given the cold shoulder. Do not force your indigo child to date, marry, or pressure them for grandkids. And don't be alarmed if they try on various sexual hats, including gay, bi, and even transsexual. Be content that they are here to pull us through the coming major changes. Religions also fascinate and repulse all indigos. They may be raised in a particular faith, but will end up shedding this religious overlay as they grow their own internal wisdom and spiritual discernment. The rediscovery that the kingdom of God dwells within them is the catalyst that empowers the indigo. I started realizing that in my 30s. Didn't understand what the, how I was going to reconcile that in my day-to-day -day life, but this is indigo speaking. I didn't recognize how I was going to integrate that in my day-to-day -day life, but yeah, I kind of knew that. Um, this catalyst that empowers the indigo and has been described as a genuine awakening moment akin to the Christian born-again experience. Once this gnosis has been achieved and the indigo becomes fully conscious, then their innate gifts begin to truly manifest. Unlike most mainstream religious experiences, the personal inner awakening of the indigo is a private thing and is generally not evangelized. People can discern auras, will spot the unmistakable crown flare of the awakened indigo, which shines like a beacon in the spiritual realm. Many indigos become experts on many religions, dogmas, and ritual are fascinating to them, and they study them for their use as tools of awakening. Sometimes they will even join a religious sect for a while, but generally do not stay. Many social groups and rituals make less sense to indigos. They see politics and social climbing as Byzantine routes to fleeting and ex elusive goals. If they see a cause that interests them, they may briefly join a staff or work for that organization until their curiosity is satisfied, then they will drop out. Indigos are both fascinated and repulsed by rigidity, rigidly embedded systems like politics, education, religious, and most social systems. They can see the forest from the trees, and to them, everyone is looking at bark and leaves and not seeing even the tree, much less the whole forest. They generally avoid getting tangled up in these systems until they are sucked in by their curiosity or find that doing so is part of their mission. It's Quotes, 
It's as if indigos have both the yin and yang, male and female qualities within them, unquote. We resist cultural gender programming. I have been told that I think like a guy, although I'm a woman. If you test your indigo children for gender-oriented abilities, you will find that each sex tests just as well in the opposite skill set. So girls will have a high spatial and mathematical abilities and boys will have linguistic and cognitive abilities. Left-handedness and ambidextrousness will be the norm rather than the exception. This is because we are not hemispheric and divided in our thinking and mental function. Instead, we are integrated holographic in our thought processes and our ambidextrous, ambidext, I can never say that word, ambidextrousness is a reflection of that inner function. We go for the simplest and most painless and useful solution to any problem we encounter, even if it seems to go against the grain of gender programming. The old left, right, male, female brain paradigm will not fit us. Our brains are integrated and use whatever hemisphere that solves the problem. This may lead to the appearance of gruff arrogance socially, but these rough edges will be polished in time. Indigos do not suffer fools gladly. I hope that parents of indigo kids will find this guidance useful and that any indigos reading this will find encouragement in these thoughts. Being a late bloomer can be a drag, but the payoff is well worth the wait. Be patient. Let your ancient inner wisdom guide you, not your impulsive young body. There's hard work for us ahead. But take time to enjoy this life too. I have. Blessings be. 2001, Sun South. End of part five.